We've got another review for you today, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 GPU, the leading client gaming GPU out there, as we all know and love from NVIDIA. We reviewed it with exactly no gaming. I know, because it's for AI. Everything's for AI, I know, and you were at the CES launch and did the whole press junket out there at Fountain Blue, and they talked about the whole 50 series, which includes, of course, the flagship 5090. We've got a 5080, 70, and 60 to be coming, but uh, it's a gaming GPU. But it does so much more. I hear you, and I know the 4090 sitting there did more than gaming too. You could still use it for professional tasks, and I know we're gonna go through some of that data, but I'm still stuck on it's a gaming GPU. A lot of them are, but I mean like I take platforms home with uh, enterprise GPUs to game on. How is that any different? Well, that one's like a five, $6,000 GPU. Why would you soil it with your games? It feels better. It feels better? It feels better knowing that I'm putting it to that sort of use. I'm not sure what you're doing with that poor GPU, but I don't think you should be feeling it. What I do think you should do is give us a highlight on the 5090, how that sits in the portfolio, and sort of some of the big changes from 4090 to, to 5090. The most obvious are, are the physical ones. Yeah, I mean, as we look at these uh, two GPUs, uh, power's increased, the size of the card's gotten smaller, so it's a two width, or two slot width uh, card versus uh, three slot width. So and we should say these are the Founders Edition models, so yeah. what gets shipped by Gigabyte, Asus, et cetera, will look and feel different and might be different sizes. Yeah, there's, so there's a lot of hardware aspects that change, and it's a lot, there's a lot of cool stuff. The cooling's gotten better, so it's able to do uh, pass-through cooling for both, uh, both fans. On the uh, previous car, there's a fan right there, although it is blocked off. That's where the circuit board is. Uh, on the uh, 5090, uh, it's hard to tell, but you can see through that uh, heatsink. You have, it looks like little pipes, but it's the uh, wiring going to each of the uh, display out uh, connectors. Uh, but it, there was a, a big overall on how to keep the car cool, uh, how to keep the car cool under load, which right. is important where this has a uh, max power consumption of around 575 watts. The previous car topped at like 450. So yeah, it's a dramatic difference in just one generation. Going to the Blackwell architecture in the 5090, it's a big time leap. Yeah, it's so there's a lot of changes that take place. Uh, you have new power connectors, you have bigger power supply needs. Uh, we've actually seen more support for this type of card on a enterprise uh, workstation, primarily because they're designed for multiple graphics cards, so. Yeah, well, this is an interesting thing, and it's a good point. So when we look at the workstation market, they're often configured with two of those, three oh, yeah. of those, two sometimes of four of those, depending on the system. We, we saw HPZs with four A6000s. Yes, the RTX 6000 ADA is a card that's the enterprise variant of the uh, GeForce RTX 4090. Um, more VRAM, it's designed for a little bit higher end workloads, but it has a much lower uh, power threshold. So this guy's designed for around 300 watts, while this one goes up to uh, 450. Now that means that most of his workstations are designed to handle more of these cards. So two of these cards would equal the power consumption of one of these, and it would have that built in. A lot of consumer platforms, they're designed around one large uh, graphics card. And right. if your top end limit is 450 watts, that's all you have available to that uh, graphics card. So well, it's, a, it's a system design issue, right? Because we've got a, a gaming PC in the other lab. We tried to throw the 5090 in there. You got three connectors in and realized I needed a fourth one and there's just not any, yeah, there's not any more headroom. So what Brian keeps on referencing is those uh, eight pin connectors. This is what he's talking about. This gives you eight pin adapters to a uh, 16 pin connection that goes into the graphics card. The uh, smaller cards, use three eight pin connectors that gives you around 450 watts. That's for the 5080. Yeah, and then for the larger cards, you get a adapter that goes uh, with four connectors. Well, and while you're talking about those, you were more impressed by the design of those cable harnesses than maybe the card itself. The 4090 Founders Edition ships with this little adapter. R and Rigid cable harness. Yes, rigid cable harness. There were some issues with this connector over time. People had problems, you could say. The new one, they've redesigned it. Much higher end wiring, really flexible, a bit of a, a bit of an overhaul to say the least. And this carries through to even the power adapter they have for the 5080, which is roughly the same thing, just three connectors. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, there's there's changes throughout. But so on those workstations, they might be set up for two graphics cards. You steal two of these eight pins, combine it into a single uh, 600 watt 16 pin, and you're ready to go. Sort of. You're ready to go electrically, but the problem with most workstations is they're not rigged for high airflow GPUs like this. And so we've noticed in a couple where it's a little bit snug, the GPU will fit, but the airflow is not ideal. Yeah, cooling plays an important role on chassis design. A desktop is gonna work different than a server and a desktop is also gonna work different than a workstation. A big part of how this uh, card was uh, redesigned on cooling is you're drawing cold air from the front and you're blowing your hot air back. Nothing comes out from the edge of the graphics card anymore. In the lab, we had workstations that had enough power. We had a couple gaming rigs that had enough room and cooling, but not enough power. Yeah, it was... We ended up with the open test bench. So we're using a uh, AMB Threadripper CPU. It has uh, 64 cores. Uh, we end up using just one DDR5 uh, DIMM, so it's a RDIMM with uh, 32 gigs of uh, capacity. Well, you want a stripped down platform that lets the GPU do its thing. Yeah, just something set up for discrete graphics. So there's a lot of things that change for this review, and not just hardware-wise, software change as well. In the support for the 5090, you mean? Or are you talking about the bundled applications that NVIDIA launched at CES? All of it. Okay. So when you look at the uh, driver support, architecture for the new Blackwell design GPUs, completely different. So a lot breaks of breaks a lot of the benchmarks. Yeah, or I should say it breaks the benchmarking process. So when we were testing all of our uh, legacy GPUs uh, to kind of prep for this, we used one of our older platforms. We didn't realize the power constraints, <laughs> so we had to change that. But uh, we were collecting data on benchmarks that turned out that didn't work with the new uh, GPUs just yet. So some didn't work at all, and some worked, but were actually slower because they hadn't been optimized for Blackwell yet. Yeah, and so we might work with uh, UL's Procyon uh, tool, which has a lot of great uh, AI um, uh, workloads inside of it, and that is regularly updated. Some of our older benchmarks, uh, like Octane Bench, right. that hasn't been updated since 2020, so that's done. And that might be about the end of that benchmark too, yes. if it's not going to be modernized. Uh, benchmarks, drivers is another thing that's always a question with these new GPUs. We have a driver set, but Windows only still in the yeah, supported version. Yeah, we were version. given the uh, game ready version, I believe it's uh, 571, and then 572 came out to support the uh, 5080. A lot of the NVIDIA drivers are uh, set up to whitelist specific GPUs, so you can't really use any driver for any of the newer cards. Uh, but also creates challenges for Linux testing. Right now, we're waiting for the release of the Linux driver, which should come out around the uh, official launch time for this. Uh, Towards the end of the month, right? Yeah. So when that happens, we'll have access to more uh, Linux testing and a lot of AI use cases. So we mentioned it a couple times though, in addition to just the gaming numbers and, and better ray tracing and shaders and all those gaming things that I don't care a lot about. I know you spend a little bit more time PC gaming than, than I do. Um, but there's also the uh, NVIDIA tool here shows some of the new stuff in the, uh, in the software suite that's interesting. There's gaming companions, there's support for what RTX chatbots and other things in there. Yeah, and this is where uh, there starts, this is where things get a little bit unique for graphics uh, in general. In the past, you'd be looking at, uh, okay, I'm rendering a video or I'm playing a single game. Now you're looking at stacking workloads. You might have a little uh, AI assistant running while you're gaming. Clippy. You yeah, uh, the modern Clippy. Clippy for games. Now I'm back in. Yeah, so as we look at this, a lot of the workloads on the cards are getting more intensive. You're going to have more uh, workloads running throughout just the normal course of your day, where in the past it might be a little bursty workloads hitting as you're uh, completing a project. Things are changing now. And we haven't spent much time detailing the technical differences between the cards. We've got all of the specs and all those details up on the website. I'll link to that in the description. You can check out the core differences between all the cards and the power and, and the, uh, the DDR7 that's in there now, uh, which is all important. But fundamentally, what you guys care about, what we care about, I think, is the performance side. And I said we didn't do any gaming. I know you put your kid on it for a little bit of Fortnite. Yes, which... I think he may have the first crown win in uh, Battle Royale right now With on a 5090. 50 yeah, okay. He got that, yeah, it, it worked well for him. It helped him, so yes, no. buy the card if you want to do better in Fortnite. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put that firmly in the bucket of no one cares. But 
What they do care about and what we care about from a professional standpoint is what the 5090 and the rest of the 50 series enables for popular professional workloads. And just last year in December, we did a paper on the 4090 compared against the 6000 ADA to really see where those lines start to blur because the, the consumer GPUs are just so much less expensive. Yes, and as we look at some of the GPUs, it might be a little bit counterintuitive given the price ranges, but you're with that higher power threshold that the consumer GPUs can do, they can yield higher performance numbers. It just depends on, are you looking for raw performance? Are you looking for more VRAM? In a lot of cases, you're look, uh, a lot of the enterprise uh, models, their big selling point is that large pool of memory. Right. So we talked about benchmarks, no gaming, but we did run a bunch of professional workloads, including uh, several in the Procyon AI test suite. Yeah, which I know you're a big fan of. But yeah, no, it has text generation, image generation uh, tools. Yeah. And what's really cool is when you start looking at the performance differences, uh, text generation, those are really bursty, so it doesn't really give a uh, the, the uh, card a big chance to stretch its legs, but we saw uh, like maybe a 16% increase there. But when we're going towards the image generation uh, workloads, it's like a 56% gain over the 4090. Which is pretty wild. Uh, and when you think about professionals using these tools and what this will enable for rendering and for other high intensity use cases, it's really pretty powerful. Now we keep on mentioning power a lot to this. The cards do use more, uh, more power, but a big uh, part to understand is if you're able to complete that workload faster, even if you're drawing a little more power, there's less energy used to complete a particular task. And we drilled into that. So your argument is if I'm doing a rendering workload 20 minute video file, and I can complete that render in half the time, that even though I'm using more power during that half the time, my aggregate power use is still lower than the prior gen card. Well, yeah, so we're looking at um, that 5090 number, for example, more than uh, twice the speed, so 50% less time to uh, render um, that uh, those particular images. Right. If it's drawing a little more power during that uh, stage, your total power used for each individual image is going to be less, and we actually proved that out. Now, you would think, well, okay, you're using less power, so it might be more efficient. Well, you you might be doing more tasks now. Yeah, you'll, so, just, you'll just take that headroom and go use more of it now. Uh, how do you think that translates? I know we don't talk a lot about gaming, but in the gaming world, in the way the games interact with the GPU, the same sort of net gains there in terms of GPU utilization. You're probably going to uh, you're probably going to saturate that GPU, and throughout the game, you're bringing it to probably 100. percent So you, I wouldn't buy the uh, the newest card to get more power efficient in your gaming experience. But in professional workloads, maybe there's some upside there. Well, yeah, you're going to be able to uh, hit your workload, complete the task, drop down into a lower idle state. Which, as we start seeing these uh, cards uh, show up in mobile devices. That plays a big role. You might not be sure. gaming all the time on battery, but if you want to complete certain AI tasks along the way, you want to be able to get it done quickly, fall back into an idle state, and not have that impact your all-day battery life. Yeah, and until we can all have those $3,000 digits, uh, Grace Blackwell boxes on our desk, yeah. the GPU that's either in a workstation tower or portable, as you note, becomes really important for AI professionals. Oh, definitely. In addition to just end users benefiting from Copilot Plus, et cetera. Yeah, so when it comes to pricing, that's a part that's a little bit tough to swallow. The new card uh, starts at uh, just under $2,000. $19.99 $2 for the Founders yes, Edition. Yes, technically $1 under $2,000. Right. And that's a uh, about 25% gain over the uh, original 4090 that came out at $15.99. Now, those pricing, uh, th that price uplift is a little bit strange when you look at the uh, the lower models. So. The 5080 has a list price now of just under 1,000, where the uh, 4080 was around 1,200. So, so the comparatively, the 5080 gets more affordable, the 5090 gets much more expensive. Yes, so if you want the additional VRAM, if you don't want the digital performance characteristics, and by the way, we'll be reviewing this thing later on, um, you'll, you'll still want to go for the 5090 if you want all those top-end uh, performance metrics. Now, if you can taper that back a bit, the 5080 it becomes an attractive option at the lower price point. But yes, everything has been getting more expensive. Well, but to be fair, we didn't talk about it, but the design on the 5090, it has the liquid metal inside, it has some other advancements that will make it more expensive, just from a 
hardware perspective. I would say that probably no one is going to buy the 5090 for, for the liquid $400 metal. more knowing that it has liquid metal inside, not besides for that, maybe a Terminator. Not for that reason specifically, but I'm just saying that there are reasons that the GDDR7 is not inexpensive. No, that, I, that these components are, are some of the most expensive of any silicon on the planet. So it's not entirely surprising that the 5090 is more expensive. Yeah, and if you haven't upgraded your power supply in a while, <laughs> now's a good time. Boy, yeah, you're, there's going to be a lot of cost to eat in, including the graphics card, power supply. You might be upgrading your chassis, but I wouldn't say if you had a 4090, like go out and run, uh, run by a 5090. But as you're looking to upgrade and maybe get more uh, AI advancements, things that uh, will actually be beneficial gains to your uh, workflow, the 50 series cards will have a lot of offer especially if you're into any of the additional software packages that NVIDIA has. And again, we detail uh, a lot of that in our, in our full written review on storagereview.com. So overall, the takeaway, I think, from my perspective, not a heavy gamer, but I do appreciate the productivity benefits. And I do think it's interesting that NVIDIA keeps on pushing more functionality into the client products that really are starting to blur the lines between that and professional workstation graphics. I'm really interested, we've heard a ton of rumors about what the next gen uh, ADA cards are going to go to for, for workstation graphics. It's going to be really interesting to see how they balance the power envelope on those cards versus the, the high energy consumption on the 5090. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, honestly, where, you, um, where developers go for different graphic cards. Because in the past, yes, you could do AI workloads on a consumer card, although you're probably directed more towards the uh, enterprise offerings, now they seem to be pushing a lot of that uh, functionality down and realizing like, hey, workstation use cases could be a developer on a 50 series GPU or on the notebook side, you're gonna be coding anywhere. They're trying to lower those costs, which yes, this card's more expensive than the 4090, but it's much less expensive than right. a uh, 6008. So in past arguments of, uh, of GeForce for AI, the, the pitch has been something like, well, you're probably gaming anyway, so you can do a little bit of AI on a gaming card, but now we're getting much more into the realm of you can do quite a bit of AI on a gaming card, and that's pretty compelling, and I think will change the way this next generation of, of not just gaming PCs, but the workstations architect for being able to accommodate either workflow. Well, yeah, you no longer have like a home gaming PC, it'll be the home AI machine. Oh gosh, we can all look forward to that. All right, so like I said, we've got the full review on the website. We'll link to that in the, uh, in the description. We'll have the 5080 review coming out as well, and hopefully we'll get to see the other two in the 50 series family in the not too distant future. Until then, thanks for checking out the uh, video review of the RTX 5090.